we do have the amazing uh, Kira who Kira he watch who did the philanthropic uh, gesture to pick up a lady who was stranded in Ajah, which trended and uh, take her to the hospital and also brought out the true story of this lady Kira is an actor and uh, a social commentator if you like she's passionate about change for Nigeria ladies and gentlemen let's make welcome to this part of the show the amazing talented and passionate Kira how are you doing I'm fine thank you thank you for having me on the show it's a pleasure to have you I mean let's start from that uh, story uh, let's start from that human angle story which is pretty much what happened to you recently tell us from the beginning i mean i heard this part of the story on the hard facts but let's let's get into it what happened um right so I've, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm shaking internally because this has been going on for almost a week now. Um, and I, I feel like I'm still, I don't know, I feel like I'm in some kind of dream or something. So, um, so I run a, um, so I, I, I have a show, um, let me just start off with that because mm. um, I feel like my what happened on Wednesday for me is also the reason why I wound up in Aja. Mm -hmm. um, I host a show on Happenings Radio, it's on, on online radio every yeah. Wednesday evenings. Okay. Uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I just I talk about life, love, relationships and all that stuff like that. Mm. And weirdly I was talking about human interaction Hmm. on my show hmm. and I just broke it down and I was just talking about how we are meant to connect and we are meant to feel each other and that's why we are even alive and that's why we are here um and I thought that I thought that that was I thought that that was something profound so when I was leaving when I was done and I was leaving I, I was telling myself I was gonna get a I was going to get into a taxi uh, it's been a long way. I'm uh, honestly a lot of things have been happening, going on in my head, in my life, and I'm, I'm just tired. But I just thought to myself, do you want to face that entire traffic hmm. inside the cab at this time? Just take a bike, so you can get home in record time and just you know chill. Hmm. So I got on a bike, and I'm I'm pretty sure that a bunch of people saw me on on the road that day because usually I'm a, I'm a hyper biker. Hmm. And when I'm when I fly bikes, like I'm the person I I listen to music and I'm hmm. like, like I get into the euphoria of just you know enjoying the breeze, yeah, and just the speed. So like hmm. I was f flipping my hair, I had my hand up in the air, like I I was basically just there were there were there were, there were cars that were following me like with their headlights um with their lights blinking because hmm. they were they kept trying to signal the driver like yo you're so cool you're so cool. Hmm. So, um, so I was like a public spectacle on the express to Aja. I was having fun. I was in a good mood that night. I remember mm. we got, I got to Aja and, um, I saw this huge crowd mm. from far and I'm thinking, uh, -uh what's, what's happening? Why, why are there so many people? Then, um, then ironically, the, the area where the, um, Okada guy is supposed to drop me, mm. there's supposed to be other bike guys there, but there's nobody there. Everywhere mm. is just, they're like littered uh, um, trash all over mm. the whole place. Mm. And then people were behind the banisters where pedestrians are supposed to walk. They like, they blocked the whole place. And um, on the other side of the roundabout, there were just a lot of people. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they, they started fighting again because usually they like that. There's a yeah. lot of uh, violence that happens around that area. Mm. So, um, so the bike guy actually stopped me and I was getting off the bike and people were shouting, no, 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 get back on your bike, get back on your bike. Oh, Yahoo boys, Yahoo boys, they'll rob you, they'll rob you. Hmm. So I was like, uh-uh, 
where Yahoo boys? Okay, the, the, that doesn't that doesn't correlate with what I was thinking, which was yeah. that they are fighting or they are mm. throwing tear gas or whatever. Where is Yahoo? Where is Yahoo boy? Mm. I be where are the Yahoo boys? Where are they gonna rob me? So they, so there was this particular woman. I remember her. She was really screaming at me, so I had to look and see her, and then she was just waving like, go 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 go, please, na juju. So I think it was hmm. when I was, I was getting on the Okada back again to go like, ah, I better go, let me come and be going before Wahala or boss. When she hmm. now said, nah, Juju, it, like my brain just kind of clicked, like, uh, it doesn't make sense. Oh, I don't know, what, what, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, and then oh, I Juju. turn around. Hmm. I, I'm getting on the bike and then I turn my head back and I see her. Like, I didn't realize that my bike guy passed right in front of her like this. Hmm. Like, I didn't see her at all. Wow. We stopped like 10 paces away from her. Hmm. So when I got back on the bike and the, and the guy was, and the bike guy was driving away, I turned back and I saw her standing there and I was like, my, I, I, my, my, my head, my brain just went blank. Like, is that a human being? Hmm. Is that a person? So I just said, stop, 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 stop. I got off the bike. I was like, I, I'd already given him money. So he zoomed away. Mm-hmm. So in my, like in my confusion, I was like trying to, like, what, what did I just see? Hmm. Then I now started hearing the conductor, the bus conductor people, the, yeah. there were some police guys around. They were laughing. And people were saying, ah, somebody now started describing a girl that, 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 see how she did now, no, no, no flesh for body again, waiting person one touch for day now, these girls, you know, they get sense. Hmm. So I started, it was, as, then I just started hearing the things like, okay, comments. now one Yahoo girl, comment, comment. So I started, hmm. I was standing in the middle of the road and I started screaming, wow, wow, you people are talking about a human being. So hmm. I, so I, I kind of like ran back and then when I really saw her, like my, yeah. My heart just broke. Like I, I knelt. I, I, I just went to the floor first of all. Like my bag slipped from my hand, and I, I was bawling. Like I was screaming. I was, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. People were videoing and laughing and say, ah, be going, be going. No, no, be your hmm. concern. No, this one they don't use them. They do, do, do. Now she hmm. know where she carry her hand. Go put. I got up and I was dragging my bag on the floor and I pulled off my sweatshirt. Hmm. And I wrapped it around her. She was standing there, shivering, like like literally skin and bone, literally skin and bone. Hmm. And she was just standing there. She had this f- look in her eye, like she didn't even know what was going, why she was there, or why people were scared. She was just she was terrified. So she was frozen. She was just standing there shaking. And as I put my sweatshirt around her, I, I could feel people snapping and I could see touch lights and hmm. everything. People were screaming, but like I kind of blanked out. I can't really explain to you what hmm. happened in that place. Hmm. I know that I, I hit somebody, I kicked somebody, I, I, you know, I swung my bag at someone. I was just screaming. Then people now started coming and bringing clothes. Like I literally was collecting clothes from people and throwing it back in their faces. Like you all must be mental. Hmm. You've been standing here watching this girl, and it's now, now that somebody has approached her that you're coming to give me, you're coming to give me your stupid wrapper. Hmm. Like I don't need this. And I was, you know, throwing it back in their faces. And I was trying to see, okay, how do I get out of here? How do hmm. I, how do I get out of here? I was, I was in tears. I was crying and shaking and. Yeah. I was crying and I was shaking and I was like, I need to get this girl out of this place. I need to get this girl out of this place. Mm. And I said, okay, let me get um, a vehicle or something. And my phone, I, my phone, I don't know, my phone crashed. And so and nothing on my, no, none of the apps on my phone were working. So I mm. didn't, I, could, I couldn't set, I hadn't set up um, any, any cab uh, app or anything like that. So yeah. I couldn't get a taxi. So I called a few people, but most of them were far away from me. And I was like, okay, I'm, st- I'm stranded in this place. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mm. And then people started coming to me like, okay, um, should we, uh, uh, let's take her to church. Let's take her. To-. I'm like, what, what do you mean you want to take her to church? This is somebody that obviously should be in a hospital because she's bleeding now. You people mm. were to be standing here and throwing things at her, throwing stones and all that stuff like should that. To take her to church? Yeah. And, and, what is thought? And, and... When I start, when the people started snapping and it just, it was the flashing, the flashing, the freaking flashing with the phones just got to me. Like, why are you people taking pictures? Stop taking pictures. Like, hmm. stop. This doesn't make any sense. Just because you have a phone in your hand doesn't mean that you should, you should take pictures. This person needs help now. And you're standing here taking pictures and taking pictures in my eye. So just take this stuff away. Now, when I was, when I started lashing out at them, they started lashing back at me. Like, who? So they're, they're, they're Agbero boys hmm. that, that started tossing stuff in my face somebody poured water tossed a bottle of water at me 
and another person opened pure water and just hit me with it that my friend shut up and calm down so you want you want come the form hero here who tell you who tell you me you can't carry this girl now not, not only you not only you not only you not only you uh, be hmm. be better person uh, you hmm. don't even know what thing you carry your hand come put me say me you come up for here go, they go your house they mind your business hmm. you they, you they talk and that would that's exactly what you get out there whenever you try to do the right thing whenever you found in a public place trying to say the right thing or stand for what's right How? that's what you get this is a human being i don't even care like like at this point i want to say this and i hope that a lot of people are listening i don't even care that i don't even, i don't i don't i don't care what anybody whatever excuse anybody had to give me that yeah. day or whatever they had to say oh you can you cannot really blame people who do not want to help because of mm. how the country is messed up and i don't care mm. the fact is there was a human being that was there that was stranded that didn't even know herself that needed help and everybody was standing there staring at her Looking at her like she's like like she's like, like a piece like a of furniture or, or something. You did the right thing, I must say. You did the right thing, and uh, that's why we're here today. That's why we're having this conversation, and that's why we're here to again appeal to the people and let us know that if Nigeria will be fixed, we all have to change our attitudes. I'm sorry. I have and then, to say now this, the story. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to say this. This person, this woman, mm -hmm. that they told me to leave, no matter how dang, no, no matter how terrible a person she may have been, mm -hmm. that she still had breath in her body. Mm -hmm. Last night I was in the hospital, and for the first time she came around and she was a bit coherent. And she knows she knows me, but she always slips in and out. Mm -hmm. And she, I was leaving, and she just grabbed my hand and, and she said, "Thank you for saving me," and mm -hmm. my heart broke because. This is Sorry. this is a human being that that understands that her life could have been been snuffed out, and just seeing her look, hmm. the look on her face when she said thank you, thank you for saving me, Sorry. and I'm like, Sorry. if that was me on the side of the road, mm. would anybody save you? Would anybody do? Would Did anybody? If hmm. I hadn't, I know for a fact that hmm. if I had taken a cab that after that night, I would Sorry. not have gotten there on time. Maybe the maybe, maybe maybe she wouldn't be alive today. I know that for a fact. I know but, but that. But how 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 is she doing? Sorry, how is she doing now? Um, she's she's so much better. I just, I think I think here's the thing. Eh, her illness isn't even an illness that can't be treated. She what was, happened to her? She was she was just. I don't know. She was really sick. We're still trying to find out what happened to her, but she mm. couldn't. She couldn't move for a, a long time. So mm. wh whatever she was, she must have been. Mm. She probably was bedridden for a long time. So she mm. couldn't eat. There was no food coming to her. And if you don't eat, you're gonna emash it. Mm. If you don't, you're not eating. You're not drinking water. You're just there. Because when we took her to uh, the first hospital, I took her to for them to te um, test her. Mm -hmm. They were asking. They were, they were trying to get veins, and they couldn't get veins. And they're like, hmm. "You're too, you're too skinny. You're too skinny." And she said, eh, "When somebody don't they suffer for a long time, the, the person go lose weight hmm. now." Hmm. Has she said anything about what happened to her? No, she hasn't. She hasn't. She just said somebody was trying to help her. That's all. Hmm. That's how she wound up in Nigeria. That's all she can remember. Hmm. Someone was trying to help her, and maybe the person couldn't just continue and thought okay next best thing put her where police people might see her and decide okay because if it's a government person that picks them up i mean you have no choice but to take the person that the government has to take care of them all right now i know that um for for, for sure um that's why i'm here and bold enough to say this that um a radio station is one uh, family that cares about the people and uh, that's why we always lend a voice to help people beyond just giving them information be a part of their lives and that's why we're here right now and um we we also would want to you know um use it as a kind of support to 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 you know ghana so what kind of support does she need now if you if you want to speak in that light okay uh so when i when uh i was in the first hospital i i actually was gonna you know spend my own resources hmm. until they started and I'm going to use this op opportunity to please forgive me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this opportunity to call out um, the private health sector. Okay. I, under I understand that the government isn't doing their best. Mm -hmm. But you as an individual, if hmm. you if you have resources to go into saving people's lives, I feel like the first thing you should think about is saving their lives, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about saving their lives first. Not the money. Not the money. A lot of people have lost their lives because they didn't pay. I heard about a guy that they were standing over his body as he struggled to breathe. 
mm. while the hospi the hospital and the people who brought him who rushed him there were arguing about how they can't bring him in unless they pay for this and they pay for that and this man's life was ebbing from him right in front of them like how heartless can we be and this is what happened to me when i went to the first hospital by the way they're gonna refund me my money that's where i'm going when i leave this place right now hmm. Hmm. They told me that oh, before they can even touch her, they can do anything. That I have to deposit seventy-five thousand naira. Hmm. So I said, "All right, let's do it." Was it gosp- government hospital? No, no, private. private hospital. I'm like, whatever, man. You want to take all the money in my pocket? They saw it. her looking like she looked like that, and you and, the and fr- someone and the said. The first thing the doctor said to me was, "Hey, I know that. I know it's not about it's not about human compassion. It's okay to feel concerned for somebody, but you know, it's hospital policy. Policy is about what? the money." I just told him, I said, listen, I don't want to hear about the money right now. Don't talk to me about money. Because it's as if that's the only thing that runs us in this country. It's money. And I don't, I, see, I don't even blame us. I, I, I heard you guys talking about music. I don't even blame you. I don't yeah. even blame us any, anymore to a certain extent. Like, I blame us collectively. Mm-hmm. Because, because you turn on the radio and you're listening to music. It's money they're talking about. You yeah. turn on, you're, you're, you're watching some TV show. They're making, they're making jest about money. Everything mm-hmm. is about money now. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, you, you, it's almost as if life is not even important. If it's not money. So money is what is going to give us life right, right now. Mm-hmm. This man looked at this patient that needed immediate care and said to me, eh, we a hospital policy is about money. What a, I mean, what am I even saying? I just said somebody died in front of a doctor while they hmm. were busy arguing and he's and he and he was choking on right in front of them. Like if this was a country where you can actually sue somebody to court and win the case. Hmm. Like I will sue the entire health sector, but I can't. Why can't you? Where do I do, do I, <laughs> I I can't sue I can't sue because guess what I'm going to take this case and put it in court and somebody is going to use money and tie it down for the rest of my my life. So money runs our life. Money runs but money, us. But money cannot save our lives. Yet. <laughs> why why are we like this, sir? Please, can you tell me? You know the question you're asking me right now. On Friday last week, or was it Thursday last week? When was that day? Wednesday or Thursday? I think so. Uh, I came on radio and I asked the same question. Why? 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 You know what? Maybe we should open the phone lines. Please. And ask Please. Nigerians who are listening. Tell us why. Why are we like this? Yeah, I could change the program for this. Why are we like this? Why? Where, where is our humanity? Why? Zero one two uh, seven good, seven. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, up. please. What's your name? Where are you good calling in, from? Even you on the line. I'm calling from. Um, let me just add a kind of the lady there. I saw your passion and your zeal and your desire. Um, yeah, I ask the same question. Um, it's like right here is wrong, and wrong is right, and mm-hmm. it's. It's the most why, why, are why are we like this? Why? I, I, why? I, I, I have tried to speak to a lot of people that why. People who say it's poverty, people say it's but I, I just don't no. buy it. It, it. Nothing makes sense. And no. It's, I, I, I don't know. It is absolute. Excuse me, sir. I never Sorry, grew sir. up here, right? Yeah, okay. okay so, uh, and, and I've been here uh, for the past eight years or so. Mm-hmm. Um... There are a lot of things I've seen and I've tried, I've adapted, I've adjusted, it's not a problem. Hmm. But it doesn't matter what I, and we worship money here, and that's just the bottom line. Everything hmm. is just to worship that money, and it does make me sad. So oh I'm kind God. of like a, an alien in an environment that worships something else. I, I oh don't God. know how to, um, wh- how, I, know I don't know where we will start, but oh I guess it's a good conversation. and. Right. Um, <clears throat> No, just bring awareness to the sort of um, characters we find. All right. Thank and you. frankly speaking, it's terrible. All right. Thank you so much. I think I know why. Hello? This, this could be why. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Before I say yeah. why, you tell me why. Yeah. My name is Jonah. I'm calling from Ibuwe for Chevron Address. All right, Jonah. Why? Why are we like this? Please, I don't want to hear one person saying the gov- you. Why are we like this? What is your story? Why are we like this, my brother? It's a loss of money. It's we are heartless. Hmm. Nigerians, the, the ones that have the money, they don't care. Only rich are richer. Poor are always poor. It's just because of. I I can't just say it. Even me, I'm short of word. But it's because of. Heartless and greedless. That's right. what we are. All yeah, right. Thank you. 
Great. This one, I think, this could be one of the reasons, guys. Yes, we're asking the question why on this special segment and conversation on radio. Hello. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, please. You have 30 hello. seconds. Could you tell us why? What's your name? Where are you uh, calling from? I'm um, Henry from Lekki. All right, Henry. Um, the why, you know? Everybody knows why. And I'm going to go straight to the point. The why is from the religious background. And I said, why? You see, the pastors, right? They've made a lot of Nigerians to be self-conscious, like, it is me and my hmm. family, hmm. you understand? They don't care what happened to the next person. It is just me and my family. So this mentality hmm. has been stopped in people's head. Me, yes. myself and I? Yes, me, so, my family, that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. You know, we live in a society, like I would say, where everyone wants to get all they can and can all they get for their family Hello? and loved ones only. Hello, Hello I'm calling. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Okusisi from Okota. Okusisi, quickly. Yeah. Why okay. are we I'm like this? Do you, know, yeah. do, you, do you know the reason why? Tell us. Uh, God did not create man to rule man. Hmm. And it is uh, the effect made the world the way it is satan is the one control the affairs of the world yes let's 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 bring it to nigeria guys i don't want to speak general stuff you see i i am in, in, I, Niger, in nigeria contest yes why there is a lot of a hatred between the tribes all right and the jealousy all right good what caused our problem okay thank you I you see, you see, you, you see. I guarantee you this 100%. Hmm. That there is no devil that will make you do whatever it is that you want to do. There is no demon Absolutely. that will make you do whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. You are the person. You are your good and you are your evil. You are your God and you are your Satan. Do you hear me? There is nothing. Money is not it. Money cannot make you choose whether you're going to help, help a human life or not. People keep talking about the fact that, oh, it's poverty. We're suffering. We're hungry. Yo, at the risk at the risk of ruining my career, which I really don't care about at this point, I'm a broke actor. Do you understand? I'm a broke actor. I don't make the money that people think I should make for my work. I love what I do, hmm. but I'm not gonna be if I if I if I if I said if I started to, if I started to talk about my personal life or or act based on how money has has I either put me down yep. or caged me, then I will be I will be like one of these people on the road. I, I will do whatever it takes to make this money, hmm. but because I know for a fact that I am enough in myself mm -hmm. let me let me tell you the honest truth i'm the person that if i wake up in the morning i can find food to eat enough to make me do what just go about my business mm. i'm fine if push came to shove and i couldn't do whatever it is i needed to do again to make this money and i had to just you, you figure just out a way I, to, just to survive i'm good but i would never ever ever see another human being in need and think first that i need to save myself first before i save somebody else see there is a man that died and, and left his wife and his children mm -hmm. Because he was trying to help people who were drowning in a boat. Mm. Yes, that man lost his life, right? He left his wife and his children. That's heartbreaking, right? Mm. But he gave somebody else life, a chance and hope. to go back home and see his child who might have been dying. Just give me one more chance. Let me just go home and see this and, and see my own child. Like, we're so selfish that we don't even consider that we could be the ones in a position that would need help. We are so selfish that we don't even consider that maybe tomorrow I might be trying to cross this this bridge here now and some guy will lose control and hit me and I need somebody to step in and intervene and help me and save my life at that point. We don't think about that. You know, you know, you talked about the violence on that road. I uh, Just some weeks ago, I tweeted my experience, how I was practically dodging stones, bottles, cutlasses and bullets at Jack on D. And then for a moment, why? I why? asked my quest myself, why? Where is the police? Where is this? Where is this? And then they told me, you know what? Forget police in this matter. They told me, the driver that was carrying me told me, Collins, better hide. We drove with our heads under the dashboard. Collins, there were police officers at Ajah that were recording 
and uh, with their phones. Ha! Huh? They were recording her with their phones. Their, their station is so, is right there. They, yeah, they, it's couldn't, close they couldn't throw one. My mother my mother works for the police in their civilian department. So and like I know that, you know, they, they have like um service things that they hand out to them. So they didn't have like maybe a service blanket, just throw it around her, you know, jack this Nothing. girl and take her to the station first and then let's call an emergency uh, ambulance to take her away and go and like that's what, what human what beings do. Well, what ambulance? That's what I called emergency services because they wouldn't um they wouldn't let us um people wouldn't take us at the at the hospital and there was um they the, the first hospital I went to, they, they said they didn't have an ambulance to, to um, take us to Luth. Mm-hmm. Okay, call emergency services because, I, I mean, it's 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 12.30 a.m. What, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? I'm stranded. Mm. And I called emergency services and the person who answered the phone had been sleeping because it was just ringing, ringing. How are you? How are you working in an emergency service center and you are sleeping when somebody is trying to call because, you know, I'm, 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 to this save person a life. is dying and you are sleeping and you're saying, like, hey, what can I do for you? You, you know what? You know what? I know that it's very difficult to have such conversations on radio because people want to talk about what will bring the clouds. People want to tweet about the things that will give them the followings, the likes. That's all they want to talk about. I hope this interview will trend for more people to listen to it, not because Colin Stecker wants to trend. If I had my way, I'll be off the social media. Excuse me. Could do that anytime. Sorry, social media. We just media. stay here. We're talking about stuff. The last time I asked a question, why should touch her? I have nothing to give against the little, uh, the young lady. In fact, I even talked about the show on my radio show. So I have nothing against that. But why should she be trending when people are dying on the streets? And we have a hundred million people online wasting time. Even the creative industry is suffering. You boast of Nollywood making millions. Well, the last time we had a conversation here, we showed you how the number of movies, movies that, are, that have made more than a billion. Single movies. The whole industry was shouting, we're making money. Here is one creative just like my humble self. I'm a creative, I'm broke. It's not because I'm not being paid. <laughs> no. Please. It's because my creative hustle can only pay if I belong to a clique or if I case some AWSs so or just beg or do something or involve in something or be a part of something that is not right that's a society we're in no one will talk about the things that's, of face that's the reason why girls in aja this is the reason why girls is it's a decay that girls in aja were taking out their phones and oh my god if i find that girl there's a video trending on instagram you better delete it because if i find you auntie i will beat you into the <laughs> ground there's a video trending on instagram where this girl turned her phone yeah. to her face and then turned it to record my girl was saying look at you girls when i not go hear what when they tell you i'm gonna know fine man we get money when i'm gonna find man we get money like you don't go out and you don't do your shit, right i'm sorry for okay. cussing on national radio yeah. Like this is this is all this is this is not right. We want to we want to listen to the things that will that will that that, that, that sound nice, that sound sweet, not the things that, that affect us in real life. I hope you understand that hmm. the more we keep pretending like these things don't happen, the worse it gets. That's right. Well, let's take a few more calls. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Collins, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Are you are you are you are you, are you, are you a hypocrite? I am not. All right, not. so tell I us have, why are we like this? Yes, and I will tell you, and someone said something close to it. I'm a Christian, and I'm, I mean, I can tell you for a fact, I believe in God, I believe yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I tell you, our church has failed. Hmm. Look, look, the moment when Christ, Christ said it, Christ didn't say money is bad. He said the love of money is the root of all evil. Hmm. He didn't say some, he said root of all evil. Hmm. We are in this state in Nigeria today because we lack empathy. Thank you. We lack, not sympathy. Empathy. empathy. Thank you. Empathy hmm. across the board. Hmm. And that is why we would think money is the solution to 
every every problem. Thank you. And God bless until you. Until we change that mindset, even the political, the economic, the spiritual space will not change. Thank you. You've made your point. I don't mind making my whole show about this conversation. After all, what are we talking about if we're not talking about this? Really? Let's just be sure that uh, we know that on national radio and try not to um, make me lose my job. For I'm now, sorry. I don't have anything else I want to do. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the callers. And Hello? please, if you know you're going to sound hypocritical, I, I, I don't want to hear that, man. Good afternoon. Who's on the line? Good afternoon. It's David calling from Maryland. All right, David. What do you have to say? Why are we like this? And what? I will blame it on our upbringing and another another aspect that we don't love each other. We don't have self love for another. Person. When you say we, you know, I wanted to address things specifically. When you say yes. we and our upbringing, I was brought up pretty well. There are, if you are brought up pretty well, there are lots of other people that were not brought up like that. Okay. They were not taught how to love one another. They were not taught most of this basic uh, life. life so uh, we should, all right, we should work on our upbringing. We should make sure that course, yes. we, 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 course, we, yes. we bring up our children. That, yeah, apart from that, I would like to beg for something. I was at Abuja all last right. week. Yeah. And I listened on Nigerian Info yeah. at Abuja and they played a message on gender equality All right. last two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. If you could help play something like that for us on radio, okay. Said, lots of people will learn how to, to uh, balance, balance each other. Gender. Yeah, balance of life, perhaps. All right. Great. We, we, we definitely have stuff like that, but you probably haven't heard it. But it's okay. We'll do more on that. Uh, thank you. Let's... I want to pick a bill. Let me see if I'll take, like, the phone lines have been buzzing. You're right. Let's squeeze in one or two calls. <sighs> Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Jacob. I'm calling from uh, Ijibo. Jacob, why are we like this, please? Um, yeah, Mr. Collins, uh, in fact, the, 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 the reason why we are like this, in fact, number one is that, is that selfishness. And, and what brought us about that selfishness is that we, we, we don't have, you know, the Bible said we should, you know, be affectionate one towards another. We don't put people in our shoes. We don't, we don't even see someone who is suffering. We don't see some, that person to be, what if it is me that mm -hmm. is passing through that thing? What would have happened to me? Mm -hmm. You know, just like that our sister just did. In fact, I really appreciate what she did and all those risks that she took because that thing would have led to yeah. you know, another thing would have led to her in, in fact losing her life there. In fact, I, I really I thank God for her for oh, what right. she did but it's selfishness but when you are driving when you are going on the, on the street of Lagos you see people you know the way they drive other people you are, you are on, on the lane somebody is going to man you just look at everything we do is it's selfishness it's just selfishness alright I would agree with you selfishness is self-centeredness is everything self 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 but not nothing about us Yet we go out and say, we are one. Yes, we are one. But let's act like we're one. Sir, please, with all due respect, if, if all of us were meant to be by ourselves, mm. you would all wake up in the morning and find yourself on one remote island somewhere by yourself. Yeah. yeah. So that you feed yourself by yourself, you clothe yourself by yourself. Who would you hate on? You fall sick and you take care of yourself by yourself. Everything you're, you're doing, you don't need another person to help you because you are self-sufficient. When you die, you bury yourself. Exactly. But we are not self-sufficient. We're not. We are not. No matter how many gadgets we're going to make, no matter how many electronics we surround ourselves with, no matter how many things or how much money that we think we have, we are not self-sufficient. I know people who cry in mansions. Hmm. All right, good. Um, we'll take a quick pause and pick some pills and uh, get to hear from Kira. Let's not act like we don't have lives, like... We don't have things going on for us. You are an actor, and um, we'd like to hear about the creative industry from a perspective. That will be for the next few minutes after the break. Stick around, guys. If you're not a hypocrite, stay tuned. If you are, tune off. I, I'm telling you that. I'll, I'll, I'll be fired for this. But you stick around. This. I promise you they're not going to tune off. But they have to stay tuned. We'll be right back. She's a creative, she's an actor, she's also a commentator and also a passionate humanist who loves every human being, irrespective of the gender, tribe, color, size, shape, religion, 
ethnicity. That's how every Nigerian should be. That's how we all should be. Exactly. Well, let's not forget about our creative part. We'll talk the creative industry now. Today, we promise to bring you a creative story, starting with you. You are an actor. Mm. You mentioned in your comments, even though I didn't expect that, but I heard it. <laughs> I've said it before. That I'm an OEP, but I don't claim to say I'm, I'm, I'm not broke. Oh, man. I, I know my contemporaries in other countries who have little, do not have as much experience as I do have, or we do have. That's yeah. not just me. At the end of the day, what do we have to show for it? The same society that is making this life difficult is the same society that will laugh at you and say, Ah, oh, you, you, are, you, to me, you work with uh, many, many radio stations. You work with this there. Uh, now you can't even, you can't even build your life. Mm -hmm. Now I have to either be dirty or stick to myself to make money. Hell no. Yeah, but they don't I choose, I choose to keep quiet. I choose to, I choose to, to keep to my plan. The best plan that I can I can have. So, what is your story as a creative? You should you should be earning more. So, um, before I start talking about that, let me ask a question. Yeah, do we believe that um, religion has um, a hold or like you know a, um, an influence in every area and aspect of our lives? Well, there's a great Desmond Tutu that said that when we were visited we had a land we closed our eyes to pray and our land was gone and we had the bible mm. well i don't know what that means i didn't go to school that much but if you do know what it means then i want to say that yes that clearly buttresses or answers the question of the impact of religion absolutely on our own what we have become it ties into every aspect of our lives every every fiber every fabric every industry every right. you know everything basically all right so let's let's get into the creative industry i'm really interested why, in knowing yeah the reason why i ask it is mm. because when we talk about things like truth fairness mm. justice integrity um nobility mm. um we talk about these things not from not from whatever industry that you're working in, like radio or the bank or oh, yeah. the oil sector, or whatever. But we talk about it as a human being. So mm -hmm. you can be anybody. You can be, you can be a lawyer, an yeah. athlete, uh, an actor, mm -hmm. and you know whatever it is that you are. Mm -hmm. But all of these qualities have to, you know, be permeate to you that they have. You have to exude these qualities yeah. as a human being. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, it means that. Because we are all supposed to be, you know, have we are supposed to have integrity and yeah. be noble and all that, 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 that. Mm -hmm. So that means that when you find yourself in whatever it is that you that you've chosen as your field mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. to work, you are supposed to use these core values mm -hmm. and you know, in, like, buttress your passion or your talent, so that these these are supposed to like be the bedrock of the foundation that lays your talent mm -hmm. so that you are this person who is um who is a good person who is who mm -hmm. is honest and mm -hmm. trustworthy mm -hmm. and all these good things of life mm -hmm. and then you are also talented to boot right yeah. so that that means that if you do that with diligence and hard work you will excel at your field yeah this is the lie that we have sold to ourselves in this society that we live in hmm. i started this amazing career that i love so much in 2006 in ghana where mm -hmm. i was doing little skits with you know a bunch of really talented people yeah. and back then we didn't used to really think about money it mm -hmm. was just like the fun of it like you know you want to tell this story and you want to mm -hmm. try and get it done the best way possible yeah and then i came back to nigeria and got in with the africa's giant the big leagues <laughs> and indeed i promise you that every year for 12 years, I've come to a point where I've told myself I'm going to quit this career. Why? Because I don't know how to be any other way but straightforward. I don't know. So you're saying there's a lot of crookedness in the industry? Oh, God. Yes. Absolutely. How do you mean? 1,000%. 
I, w- I would go to every single audition. Do you know what it means for you to be a woman that walks into an audition ground mm. and perform for people who are staring at you like, where did you come from? Hmm. And then somebody would still call you back and say, I want you to meet me here because I want to talk to you beyond your acting. You hmm. are so beautiful. You are so intelligent. Hmm. You are so this and you are so that. And I want, and I want more of you, but it's not just about this work. Of hmm. course, you are going to think that's a special attention this person is paying you. Yeah. But it would end up in a bedroom or in the back of somebody's office where they want you to do things with them. And if you refuse... For a role. Or if you say, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't, I wasn't looking at that. I didn't even realize that, that was where we were going with this stuff. Hmm. You don't get that call back. And you, automatically you're disqualified. You, you're no more talented. That happened for such a long time <laughs> that at some point, actually, my, my, my family were asking me, are you sure that this stuff is going to work out for you? Because <laughs> I never told them the truth. First of all, it was a fight <laughs> for my Christian family to let me get into an industry that to them, they already saw it. It was a den of iniquity. <laughs> but den I don't, of iniquity that's what we call like that's what my family that's industry. what my family called this thing that i wanted to do for like you you it's a den filled of iniquity immorality like you know when i fought everybody in my family got disowned for like a year hmm. and i was on my own and everything i was struggling in tan- like emotionally psychologically and 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 you know you don't you don't tell people this stuff you just hmm. keep it and then the few people that are in your in your life it just seems like you are gonna be a burden to them if you keep having to unleash all the stuff. So you hmm. keep it to yourself. So my family didn't know all the like they didn't really really know the nitty gritty details of coming up in the industry. Hmm. The only reason why anyone can call me today, you know, um, like and just directly give me a job is because I have paid my that if that that phrase paid my dues. dues. I've hmm. paid my dues ten times over. Before you can make, start getting roles, I mean, with the way you sound. And with this passion, you should be on every single movie. Yeah. If I was going to recommend, yet, because you're not ready to play, they believe you're not talented. I'm a lone wolf, sir. I, I totally understand this because I won't lie. I won't sit here on this side of the divide and act like I don't know of these things that happen. I act, I will act like I don't know um, the so-called cliques and cabals mm-hmm. that they call themselves who will claim to tell you they'll end your career or, you know, make you not, you, you, you won't achieve anything in the industry if you don't go through them or play play their cards. Yeah, now, it, it goes... I, it, I got it goes, that a few times. You got it too. I got that a few times. And it also goes beyond um, just asking for sexual, uh, of, for the latest baby. Exactly. It, it could be as far as paying. Some women say mm-hmm. you should pay your dues by paying money. Mm-hmm. We know the story of even in the music industry, you know the story of the middle men. Oh, no, let's talk about this one. Huh. Let's talk about this one. Let's talk huh. about let's talk about this one. The little groups and factions in the industry as opposed to a proper structure that helps an actor like myself who yeah. who is a complete loner. I don't know how to be the person who is like I'm an I'm an extroverted introvert. I am mm. the kind of person who can adapt to anything at the drop of a hat. Mm. But the person that I am in my core, I am the person who enjoys my solitude. I'm the person who enjoys. I literally can tell you how many close friends I have on one hand and fingers will still remain. Hmm. I don't do clicks. I don't do, I'm calling you and every day, every two days or three days to say, how are you doing to check up on you just to remind you that I'm there. Because I believe that if there is a structure in this industry, there should be a roster so that when you're looking for an actor, you will be like, this actor fits into the casting that I need. Yeah. Can we please reach out to their management and yeah. see if they're available for this job? You don't need me to call you, yes, ma, yes, sir. I'm be greeting you every day. And I'm saying this stuff because I'm tired. I'm tired of keeping quiet. After this one, I will pack up. I will look for one jungle. I we move to the place and you know live my life because i can't keep I, I feel like i'm in a place where there is a way that i see this stuff mm-hmm. and i see it in such a way that it would it would be so much bigger than it is but right. because the way that the way in which 
it would actually get there is not the way that most people actually want to run it. Yeah. And that's the reason why we're, we're, we're having the problems that we have. All right. Now, if you're going to give a message, let, we don't want you to go. We don't want you to run away. We don't want you to leave Nigeria. If we all leave Nigeria, um, what, what will be left of Nigeria? That's the truth. The pe- Nigeria is not the land, it's the people. Even those who are uh, destroying the industry. If we all leave Nigeria, you have nothing to destroy. You should learn. You should learn. All right. Because we don't want you to go. If you were to prefer a solution to an end to some of these ills that exist in the industry. You know, I, I, I expected that at this time, not a lot of people will be calling. <laughs> yes, because I know that I say he will comes before how do they say in the bible i can't remember i may be reading my anyways that if you must criticize a thing you should at least stand from a moral standing so yeah. if you're going to give a, a word or prefer a solution from different facets from the part of everyone listening the part of the government the part of other creatives specifically on fixing the creative industry with regards to some of these irregularities that have gone unabated for so many years on t- in fact we don't even talk about them i don't know what impression with all they'll respect, have of me now with all due respect we have a few we have a few big studios in nigeria yeah film these studios have produced some really big work yeah nigerian standard hmm. here's the thing here's the thing we have the ability to make triple since this is money we love money yeah. so much so mm-hmm. i'm i'm ne- i've never been a numbers person I, yeah. I don't i don't think i'll ever be a numbers person but i know that i'm going to be this richness that everybody is running around trying to be rich mm-hmm. you see this money in this industry this nollywood we, which we should be easily making triple what we're making and feeling happy about now hmm. but the reason why we're not going to do that is ego do you do you know how terrible hmm. the ego is hmm. it's ego Listen, so a bunch of people come together, they make movies, and they, oh my God, we made a movie, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. Of course it's fantastic now. Mm. If it's not fantastic, would people go to cinema and watch it? Would you make the would movie? Would you make the movie? And, and no. But the question is, is it as fantastic as the world global stage? Let's not, let's not lie. The only reason why we're second in terms of film or whatever is because of the volume not, yeah, not production the production number of productions not quality it's not the quality it's not, not even not even the money we're making it's we're, not the it's not the we're, impact. Make, we're making South a, Africa a is probably grain, making more money. A grain out of, of course. South Africa is probably making more money in film than we yeah. are. But it's not even, it's the quantity. Do mm. you, and, and, and that's the thing about it is that we all know that it's not quantity that makes a thing, it is the quality of it. And we'll be celebrating quantity every as time, opposed to quality. Exactly. And every time we have this discussion about we should be trying to get better, people say, oh, don't compare us to Hollywood. Oga, excuse me. Let me ask a question, please. Please, 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 please. Who, first of all, taught you that you can carry a camera and put in a room and tell... Have you made a camera people? before? That you can tell some people, just pretend that you are John and you are Jane and you people are... are your okay. marriage is about to Good scatter. Come you. and give us drama. Who, 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 first of all, did it? You saw somebody do it, right? They right. taught you. So if you're going to... If you want to do what they are doing, you want to emulate them, then learn what they are doing first. Mm-hmm. Perfect that. So if you can, if you are telling me that I should not compare you to Hollywood, mm. then my question is, why are you even try striving on the path of them? Because that's what we used we used to laugh at India. Mm. We used to laugh at India like what and is China. This? What? Thank you very much. We used to laugh at India and China like what? What? What are they doing? What is this movie? Now every single equipment we use in our industry could, I could say with all self visibility, China has the major part of the production of. The gadgets we use, boss, the are, same China boss, and they India. Are, boss, there are Chinese actors and there are Chi- Indian actors that we saw in small, small TV shows mm. that are now in Hollywood. They are mainstream. Yeah. Which of our superstar actors has crossed into mainstream Hollywood? Uh, we are the second largest. Yeah. We are the so right now that means that there should be a mainstream actor that should be in Hollywood. Even Wakanda right now. Not I'm not talking about small, small like stuff. I'm talking like big Hollywood. Absolutely. Like like Priyanka Chopra, for instance. Uh, oh. Now, even the, the movie they made about Africa. The Beast shoot, of the No shoot, Nation. Oh, absolutely. If, even, even Black Panther, that was shot, in, it, that was shot about Africa. Like by me, Jesus. All right? They even mentioned that Sambiza Forest. But trust me, they didn't shoot 
any of the scenes hey. in Nigeria at all because there was nobody to talk to. Beast of No Nation, Nko. Richard Quests was in Nigeria some time ago. He came to the same studio, this studio, at a time. You could check on that on our YouTube page. And <laughs> he said he was accused that uh, they did a tour, travel tour to different countries. They didn't come to Africa and specifically they didn't come to Nigeria. And they said, they asked him, why did you do that? Is it because in Nigeria is not this, you are being racist and all? He said, no. He's not being racist. He said he didn't know who to talk to. He didn't even know. There was no nothing showing that you could go. No procedure. Who do you, what procedure? What, what structure? You didn't see any structure. Please, to, thank you. He please said it live. On, I didn't say it, guys. Go go on our social media page. Check on our YouTube page, Nigeria Info on YouTube. Search for Richard, Richard Quest on, on, I think it was on the media dialogue on one of the shows, uh, what, uh, previous shows. He was here live in this studio. Procedure. So this thing has been on for a long time. In the industry, no procedure, n- n- no structure. We're here boasting and saying we'll end people's careers. This Hello. Is, this you don't even have a career, if I have to say it. Well, um, I know you're going to come again. I know that. We're going to have a conversation again. And uh, probably on Wednesday... We talk about social media addiction and our phones that have become our lives. And there is going to be a, a really heated conversation on Techie Talk on Wednesday. So how can they find you on social media? How can they follow you, especially your, your, your program online? How can they be part of your life? I know a lot of people, we want to hear more of these things, especially from this platform. Let's get to here. Um, well, I want to first of all thank every single person who has been... Um, you know showing concern for me and for the situation that i'm currently in mm. i i really appreciate you guys i am so grateful um and also the hospital Luth, yeah. first of all let me just thank them please mm-hmm. that the uh, the accident and emergency units when they when they responded to us like they've been taking care of her and then we've moved her to the ward like everybody's just been above and beyond in right. Luth. okay so i'm grateful to god for that all right. yeah and um so for me personally um I am on Instagram. That I, I am pretty much only um, active on Instagram, and the handle is Kira He Watch Official. All right, and Kira mm. is spelled K E I R A, and He Watch is spelled H E W A T C H. So All right, at Kira He Watch Official. Uh, official at yes. Kira He Watch official. official. Yes. So guys, make sure you're following and. Uh, uh, be a part of this amazing soul. Thank you again for saving a life. Thank you for leading by by example. Thank you for not being deterred. Thank you for not giving up, even against all odds. The odds are more, but we keep pushing forward. We keep hoping that we win more people to this side of good so that we can all together work for the common good of Nigeria. Just one last thing, and I hope that somehow we can fight our way back to a place where someone doesn't have to tell me thank you for saving a life because it will be a normal thing to do. Hmm. Hmm. All right, there you have it, guys. Pretty much that conversation today on Entertainment Business Monday from a human angle story into the rats in the industry into words of advice from our guest. What else do you want? Well, I'll tell you what else is up for your listening delight. We have a game show where you can play to win a meal to feed someone who's on the streets. So if you're listening to us, you call the radio station, simple questions. There are a lot of beggars on the streets. There are a lot of guys. I tell you how they grab my water bottle or a bottle of drink if I have on the street. On Aja under the bridge, in on the in Sulere, in on the mainland, everywhere. And it's not just the Lagos stuff. So how would you like to play? To win a meal and donate it to someone but that's not to say you can't win for yourself well if you feel that you're hungry your family will have people who call in and say look my family doesn't have anything to eat or i want to win this game or so my family can eat well the game is called chow down on the lunchtime game time that will be um right after the next uh, break but let's not forget why we're here and let's learn to change the way we think the way we feel, the way we talk, let's stop the hate. And most importantly, let's stop being hypocritical.